Hello, and welcome to Katie and Sarah Lee Kennedy Field inside Pascal Fieldhouse. For today's press conference, to introduce Duke University's next head football coach, Mike Elko. <laughs> On behalf of Duke Athletics, thanks for attending and for following the mask mandate while indoors on Duke's campus. At this time, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. Today's program will feature remarks from President Price, Nina King, and Coach Elko. In addition, Coach Elko will take questions from media members in attendance today. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Duke University President Vincent E. Price. Thank you, Kat. And good morning, everyone. I am thrilled to be here today with Nina uh, and our colleagues from across the university to welcome Mike Elko to Duke. <laughs> Ours is an institution with a storied history related to football. Our very first football coach in 1988 was none other than the institution's president, John Franklin Kroll. And with that in mind, Mike, I have promised not to be as involved as President Kroll. A century ago, in 1920, football was returning to our campus after a 25-year hiatus. So today, we are entering the second century of Duke football. And Mike Elko is exactly the coach to lead us to an extraordinary future. Mike is no stranger to ACC football, having coached at Wake Forest before heading to Notre Dame and then to Texas A&M. And I'm proud to report that he and I both spent time at Penn, his alma mater, uh, which he helped lead to an Ivy League championship uh, crown in 1998. And I know he will bring similar success here to Duke. Mike will bring with him an extraordinary knowledge of the game. He was a league-leaning quarterback in high school, but was moved to defense in college, where his coach said, you could tell from day one that he had an unusually deep understanding, not just of his own safety position, but of what everybody else on the field did. He brings with him a record of coaching success, producing some of the nation's top-ranked defenses on a number of campuses. He brings with him a keen understanding of how athletics can support the identity and campus life of a complex research institution. And perhaps most importantly, he brings with him an unwavering commitment to the academic and the personal success of his student athletes. These are values that are vitally important to Duke Athletics, and we feel very confident that our football program is in excellent hands with Mike. Mike, as you will soon learn, Duke is Bull City proud. And today, we are so very proud to welcome you and Michelle, Michael, Andrew, and Caitlin to the Duke and Durham families. Congratulations. Thank you, President Price. We'll next hear from Duke Vice President and Director of Athletics, Nina King. Thanks, Kat. Um, wow, good to be with everybody uh, on this beautiful December morning. Um, we're incredibly excited to officially welcome Mike, Michelle, Michael, Andrew, and Caitlin to the Blue Devil family. What an exciting day. Um, I'll be brief because I know it's not me that you necessarily want to hear from, um, but I do want to share a few of my thoughts um, from my perspective on the man that is our next head football coach. When we embarked on this national search 15 days ago, we set out to find a leader that embodied the values of Duke University. 
someone that was committed to excellence in athletics as a part of a larger commitment to excellence in education. Someone who would outline clear expectations for success both on and off the field. And someone who would be a teacher and mentor to the young men that he would be charged with developing during their time as Duke students and preparing them for life after Duke. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Mike Elko. From my first of many conversations with Mike over the past two weeks, it was not hard to see his commitment and passion for the entire student athlete experience. His desire for competitive success on the football field, but more importantly, in the classroom and in life. Mike shared with me his deeply personal story that has made him into the man he is today. A family man that values education and he is an incredibly authentic and grounded leader. He's a, he has a remarkable football mind and he's shared his talents with some incredibly successful football programs throughout his career. I talked to a lot of people around the country about Mike and to a T, everyone enthusiastically talked about his intelligence and football acumen, as well as his ability to relate to student athletes and prospects. When we asked our current student athletes what they wanted to see in their next head coach, they told us that they wanted an innovative coach with energy and enthusiasm who was a proven winner and knew how to develop players. Well, I can say, gentlemen, without a doubt, Mike Elko is every single one of those things and more. We got our guy, and I could not be more thrilled. Before I turn it over to Coach Elko, a few people that I'd like to thank. First and foremost, thank you, President Price, for your trust in me and your unwavering support through this process. You've been an unbelievable partner throughout my short tenure as Vice President and Director of Athletics, and I am once again deeply grateful for our partnership as we continue to move Duke Athletics forward. To the Board of Trustees under the leadership of Lorraine Sperling, as well as our university administration, thank you for your passionate support, understanding, and assistance as we undertook this endeavor to bring our next football coach to Duke. To my colleague, Art Chase, Senior Associate Athletic Director and Football Administrator, who was with me every step of the way along this search. It's a wonder we didn't get too sick of each other over the past couple of weeks as this process took countless hours, long days, long nights, traveling around the country. But there's no one I'd rather eat peanut M&Ms with for dinner. While strategizing over spreadsheets and pages and pages of information, thank you for being a great colleague and friend every day, but most importantly throughout this process. When we embarked on this national search to bring the very best to Duke, we partnered with Daniel Parker from Parker Executive Search, and a huge thank you to Daniel and his team for their assistance and wise counsel during what was a very strategic and thorough process from day one and Daniel provided the peanut M&Ms for dinner. I'd also like to thank Coach Trooper Taylor for serving as our interim coach, head coach, during a time filled with anxiety and unease for our student athletes, staff, and recruits. Trooper did a fantastic job keeping everyone together, patient, and focused until we arrived at an announcement. I'm most appreciative for his steadfast and positive demeanor throughout the past two weeks. And most importantly, a massive thank you to all of the football student athletes who played a critically important role during this process. Your voice matters, and we are deeply appreciative for your input and your feedback. You are Duke football, and this hire is for you. I'm excited for all of you as we enter into the next chapter with Coach Elko. There are so many others within the university um, and within athletics who played such a large part in this hire, this announcement, this event today. Thank you all. It most certainly takes a village. So with that, that is enough for me. I'd like, it to turn, I'd like to turn it to the man of the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the next head coach of Duke football, Coach Mike Elko. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Thanks. 
Wow, thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm truly blessed to be the next head football coach at Duke University. Um, there's so many people to thank uh, that have been part of this process through the way, and so I'm going to be long, I'm sorry, in advance for that. Uh, I'm going to start by saying thank you to President Price. Um, thank you for believing me to be the next leader of this football program. It was your vision of how academics and athletics could blend together on this campus that really sold me that this was the right place and the right time for Duke football. Uh, thank you, Nina. Uh, your professionalism in this process has been unbelievable. Uh, I really look forward to rolling up my sleeves and partnering with you uh, and elevating this program to the levels that we want it to get to. Uh, and to Art Chase, uh, thank you for the, the last 48 hours and navigating this whirlwind. Uh, I don't know if I actually get to Durham without your help, and so I appreciate everything that you've done. Uh, this is a coach's dream, uh, to stand in front of this podium as the head football coach. When you start this profession, this is everything that you've ever hoped for. Uh, but there's so many people along the way that helped me get here, uh, and so I'm going to take a minute and thank some of the ones that have been important in my journey. Uh, it starts with my wife, Michelle. Uh, you are my rock. Um, the support you've had for me and, and, and our family throughout this whole thing, I can't do any of this without you. Uh, to my three kids, Michael, Andrew, and Caitlin, uh, the sacrifices you have made to allow Daddy to chase his dreams, uh, I'll forever be thankful. And I know it's not always easy, but you guys are amazing, and I'm not here without you. Uh, to my mom and dad, uh, who I believe are watching at home somewhere, um, thank you for instilling in me work ethic that allowed me to pursue my passion uh, and, and coach this great game of football. I know there were times when it felt like that college tuition uh, wasn't paying off, um, but I think in the end, it all wound up okay and, and, and certainly excited to be here. Um, there's a lot of coaches that have impacted my life on this journey. Uh, a lot of men that, that have, have played a part in, in making me the coach that I am today uh, and the mentor of young men that I am today. Uh, that thank you starts with Dave Clawson. Um, thank you for taking a chance on a young kid trying to figure this whole profession out twice. Uh, he did it twice for me, and, and it's an amazing. Uh, your mentorship and your friendship, Dave, uh, have meant the world to me, uh, and I'm not on this podium without you. Uh, and now I really look forward to competing with you uh, every Saturday uh, for the next few years to come. Uh, thank you to Brian Kelly and Jimbo Fisher uh, for giving me an opportunity to really hone my craft at the highest level uh, and learn how to manage a national brand uh, and learn how to, to, to really take my game as a coach to the next level. Uh, there's countless of assistance coaches that I've worked with over the years uh, that I will forever be in debt to. Uh, their tireless uh, loyalty, the work ethic they've put into our programs, the way they've shaped my life, uh, I will forever be thankful. There's too many of them to name, uh, but they've touched me in ways that I can't even discuss. Uh, and then to the players that I've been around throughout the years, okay? Uh, you are the reason for my success. Uh, I am not here without the players that I've come across. You guys have impacted my life, my family's life. Uh, without you, none of this is possible. All right, so we made it through that. I made it through that without crying. That was my whole goal of the day, and so I did it. Um, you'll find I'm a little bit of an emotional guy. Uh, and so then that brings us to the here and now, okay, and, and why Duke, okay? And I believe that now is the time for Duke football, okay? The Duke brand is nationally recognized as a brand of excellence. The combined accomplishments of this university in academics and athletics is truly unparalleled. Okay, we have a world-renowned faculty we have an amazing group of coaches that have achieved nothing short of greatness in their fields. The amount of ACC championships and national championships that this university has brought to Durham is amazing. And now it's time for football to get on that level. It's time for football to hold its end of the bargain and elevate itself to be in a national brand and a nationally recognized program. To achieve this success, we're gonna need a lot of support. Okay, it starts right here in Bull City. Okay, Bull City, we are your team. Okay, we need your support of this great program for us to achieve the things that we want to achieve. We need you to get behind this football team. We need you to grow with this team together. Okay, we need you to help fill this stadium on Saturdays in the fall. And we need to create the best on-field atmosphere in the ACC every Saturday that we play a game. To the student body, Okay, I have been amazed at what you can do from a school, standpoint, school spirit standpoint 
from afar for a long time. What you do in Cameron Indoor as the Cameron Crazies is amazing. We need that same energy and passion on Saturdays in the fall at Brooks Field at Wallace Wade Stadium. We need you to bring that same energy to our stadium. There's nothing better for a young football player to run out of the tunnel in front of a rowdy student section and a packed house and get ready to play the game that they love to play. To the ex-players, okay, you have open access to this program. Whatever error you played in, whenever you graduated, this will always be your home and your program. Whatever we can do to bring you back into the fold, however we can make you a part of this thing, please let us know and we want to do it. You have open access to everything that we're about. And to the Duke alumni across the nation, we need your help selling the brand. Okay? We need you to sell excellence at Duke everywhere you go and not just in this university, but in this football program. We need to spread the word that Duke football now stands for excellence nationwide. Okay? The vision I have for this program is that we will achieve the highest levels of success in everything we do. We will be competitive in the classroom. We will graduate our student athletes. We will be a lifelong partner with them in whatever future endeavors they choose to pursue, whether it be in the NFL or in the workplace. We will be tremendous ambassadors for this community, both here on the campus and in the city of Durham. And we will win championships on the field in the fall. And I want to make sure we say that again. We will win championships on the field in the fall. Okay? And to a <laughs> to accomplish that, we're going to have to learn to embrace the grind. Okay, and, and that is a word that gets thrown around by every student athlete that I've ever played with or played or coached in my tenure. And so we're going to define it very simply and we're going to turn it into an acronym. We will develop grit, the mental and physical toughness that will allow us to persevere through difficult times and to collectively allow us to overachieve as a group. We will develop relentless effort. We will understand that it is a privilege to represent this great university and this great institution on the football field. And we will exhaust ourselves in our pursuit of excellence in our craft. We will develop, we will conduct ourselves with integrity. We will understand that we represent much more than ourselves when we become a member of the Duke football program. And that we will make choices in our lives that align with the high standards of this great institution and this great community. The most important piece of the, the acronym will be this. We will live in the now because the now is all that matters. The now is all that we can control. Our previous failures have nothing to do with what we can become now. We are looking to have success now. We are looking to improve now. We are looking to work hard now. That is the most important part of the championship mindset. We have to get that down and we have to understand that now is the time for Duke football. And we will become dependable. There are a lot of people counting on each other in a football organization. It's one of the largest, largest organizations on a college campus. And for us to have success, everybody has to pull their own weight. We have to be able to rely on each other. We have to be able to depend on each other. And we have to know that everybody has each other's back. If we can't do it together, we can't do it at all. And so we've got to make sure that we understand that. The beauty of these five pillars is that they require zero talent. There's no level of excellence that you need in your athleticism. It's simply a mindset. And it's a mindset that we have to change. It, it demands us to make a choice that we will not settle for anything less than excellence in anything that we do. To tr once we truly understand that and we truly embrace these five pillars, success will follow and success will follow on the field. But we have to be process driven to get there. We have to understand that it's going to take time. We're going to have to climb the stairs and we're going to have to work to get where we want to go. Okay. But again, I will accentuate now is the time. Okay. I cannot wait to pour every ounce of energy and passion that I have for this great game into this program and this university. I'm so looking forward to this opportunity. I'm grateful for every opportunity I've been given along the way, but this one is special. And this one is time. This one is the time. I'm so excited to be your new head football coach. I cannot wait to roll up my sleeves to go to work. And I'm just super excited to be here and be part of this family. Uh, 
Can't wait to get going. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. Coach Elko, thank you. We'll now open the floor for questions from the media. There are microphones located on each side of the, seating, the, the center seating section. Please use the microphone that's closest to you when called upon. When you come up to the microphone, please remove, remove your mask, identify yourself and your organization. Steve Wiseman, Aaron Beard, we'll start with you. Hi, Mike. Steve Wiseman from the Raleigh News and Observer. Hey, Steve. How are nice you? Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, you mentioned support in your opening statement, and the last two schools you've been at have supported their uh, football programs at a higher level than what Duke has been able to do. What have, you, what have you thought about the facilities when you got here, and what have you been told about support that may be coming increasing in the future? Yeah, I, I think this is about the people uh, and where we want this program to go. Uh, facilities are buildings. Right, People are what make a football program. And so obviously we're gonna try to provide and get the best facilities we can. Uh, Nina's gonna handle that with her team. Um, but this is really gonna be about uh, building a brand, uh, building a football program, and interlocking that program into Bull City. And if we can do that, uh, support will come, success will come, and when that happens, facilities will come. Thank you. Hey Mike, Aaron Beard with the Associated Press. Hey, um, I was curious about your time at Wake Forest. That's a kind of a, there's a familiar challenges, I guess, yeah. uh, to a place like this where it's a developmental program. It's not about luring in every five-star kid. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, kind of what did you learn from that process of being exposed to those challenges and how you think that might apply to what you've got to do here? Yeah, I, I think we don't want to sell ourselves short. I think uh, we want to have the ability to be a developmental program and, and take kids and make them everything that we can become. But I also think we have a very strong national brand. And I think we want to go beat down doors and knock down doors across this country to find elite level athletes who want elite level academics. And they're out there and they exist. And so we'll find a balance uh, between uh, in increasing our recruiting efforts and maybe bringing in some kids that can help right away with bringing in kids that are more developmental. Uh, and I think the difference between the two programs, honestly, is, is we have a national brand and we can go a lot of places across this country and sell what Duke football stands for. Just to follow up, you've been at a lot of kind of different schools, yeah. uh, different types of schools. Yeah. Kind of, does it feel that much different in how you apply what you want to do in terms of here versus A&M or whatever, you know, different schools, different audiences, but, you know, do you just kind of apply what you believe in and you can make it work any place? Yeah, I, I think uh, every program is a, is a puzzle. And, and we've got to find the solution to make it as great as we can be. Um, I've, I've been fortunate to be at a lot of different institutions uh, in a lot of different regions in this country um, with a lot of different traditions, history, and resources. And, and all of those experiences, I think, have shaped me um, to come here to learn about this puzzle and to figure out how to get this program on the top of the ACC. Max Rego and Connor O'Neill. Coach. Hey, Max. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. You know, you talked a little bit about your approach and as a coach, but obviously with signing day being in two days, can you just talk a little bit about your approach to recruiting, especially within the state? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think everything we, re we do recruiting has got to start inside out. Um, we're going to make sure we scour the great state of North Carolina uh, and find every kid that we think matches our, our program's goals, right? And that is to be great in the classroom and great on the football field. Uh, and then I think from there, you expand. And I think that's again, uh, and we're gonna keep coming to this, but that's again where this brand will help. Uh, I think we can expand into a lot of places across this country um, to find football players that wanna be great in everything they do. Um, they're out there. I've done it nationally. I've done it in a lot of different places. Uh, we just gotta roll up our sleeves and work. And, and we can't settle ourselves uh, on, on being a regional school. We can't settle ourselves on taking what's available and what's easy to come by. Uh, we've gotta go out there and we've gotta really work and compete 
compete to get the absolute best student athletes that we can get. Uh, I think you see that across the board uh, at a lot of the sports programs in this university already. Um, and so it will always start in North Carolina. That will always be our home. And we will always make sure that we are doing an extremely thorough job in this state. Um, but from there, we've got to make sure that we really expand ourselves to find and bring in the absolute best that we can. Thank you. Hey, Mike, Connor O'Neill from hey, Connor. Devils Illustrated. Yep. I think we have a good idea of what kind of defense you'll be running, but yeah. I wanted to ask about your visions for the offense. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the first vision is very simple. We're going to score points, and I want to make sure that, that everybody understands that. Um, going through this process a few times, for some reason there appears to be this belief that defensive coaches don't want to score points. Um, and so I want to make sure that that's clear. Um, no, we're, we're, going to run, we're going to run a multiple offensive system that really allows us to utilize who we are. I, I think we're going to be able to bring in kids um, that have a very high football IQ. Uh, we want to make sure that we're adapting this system to them, uh, to give them some freedom and flexibility to make sure that we're running the right plays at the right times against the right looks. Uh, maybe create a little bit more of a pro style mentality in that regard and how we go about it. Um, and then we want to be able to utilize our personnel. I think that's the biggest thing. Everyone wants to think about offensive philosophy and what that looks like in, in terms of, of style of offense. I think our offensive philosophy is going to be very simple. We want to get the hands in, the, in, in our best playmakers as much as we possibly can. And we want to allow them to be successful uh, and make plays. And so there'll be years where we're more talented at running back and we have to become more of a run team. There's going to be years where we're talented at quarterback and we've got a great tight end and we're going to look like a team that features the tight end. Uh, and then if we've got great outside wide receivers, we're going to look like a spread team that throws the ball all over the place. I think we've got to find our personnel, take our personnel and utilize it to the best of our ability. And if I could follow up, uh, I know you got balls juggled a lot of different ways right now, but how how is your timeline for the staff coming together with recruiting day yeah. and two day or signing day in two days? Yeah, so so my priority since I got hired has been this recruiting class. I think that is the first and foremost thing that we've got to get hammered out. We've got to make sure uh, they've been through a tough two weeks uh, trying to figure out who they're going to send their son to play for, their son trying to figure out the man they're going to play for. Uh, and so I've spent a lot of time in, in that avenue over the last couple of days trying to ease everybody uh, and, and make sure that we get to Wednesday and we get this class signed and part of this community um, and then from there it'll be building a staff uh, and what I'll say is just this um, trust the process uh, it, it will not go as fast as anyone wants it to go. It never does. Uh, we're going to be extremely thorough in how we go about this process. Um, there will be guys playing in bowl games, guys with obligations to do other things. Uh, but this thing will come together. And at the end of the day, we will have the absolute best staff in the ACC. Thank you. Yep. Next, we'll have Jim Sumner and Bill Brown. Hi, hey Mike. Welcome to uh, Duke in North Carolina. Welcome Jim? back to North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, Jim. Are you Jim? Jim Sumner. Jim, yeah. Uh, yeah, I write for, uh, for Go Duke the Magazine. And Great. Basketball Report. Great. Um, you're coming in, your first head coaching job in a position of a lot of changes in the college landscape, in particular yeah. uh, the transfer portal that enables players to come in and play one time without sitting out a year, yeah. and then names, image, and likeness. I'm sure you and Nina discussed this at great length. How do you leverage these two uh, two things to Duke's advantage. Yeah, I, I think the first thing uh, is the transfer portal, and, and that starts with our own locker room. Uh, we've got to build a culture and a family atmosphere in our locker room that our kids understand that this is the only place they want to be, and this is the only program they want to be part of, and that they can get everything they want out of academics and athletics being here at Duke. Uh, and that's going to take work, and that's going to take time, um, but we want to make sure that we first and foremost protect our own home and that we don't, we don't lose anybody. Uh, I think the transfer portal nowadays in college football uh, is a tool. I think you'd be naive to not utilize it in some way. Uh, we certainly don't want to make a living in there. We certainly don't want to overdo it. And we certainly don't want to bring anyone into this campus who doesn't align with this campus core value. Um, but it will be something, obviously, that we will utilize. I think that's part of modern day college football. Um, the, NLI, the NIL is a, is a, is a, is a 
touchy thing right now. It really is. It, it kind of got thrust on us this fall. Uh, I don't think anybody was really ready for it, um, but it's certainly an opportunity and there's things out there that we're going to have to be able to take advantage of um, to make sure that we're providing the correct and proper exposure for our student athletes to make sure that they can take full advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Hello, Coach. Hi. I'm Bill Brown. I'm with the Devil Den 24-7 Sports. Hey, Bill. And uh, as a former player, I'd like to tell you that uh, I was ready to jump right up there on your opening speech. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Come on in, Bill. We could use you. I, I don't think at my age it would quite work so well. <laughs> Mine neither. <laughs> but, but anyway, exploring all this um, and your Wake Forest background, Yeah. Um, one of the quotes that comes out of the Wake Forest experience is from, I believe it was Jim Grove, that you know you want to get old and stay old. Is are you going to be looking at that philosophy as well yeah. uh, here at Duke or something different? Yeah. Again, I think there's a balance, and 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 uh, not to to disrespect anybody because I'm certainly not trying to start this thing off that way. But I think we'll pull more off of my Notre Dame experience than we will the other one. Because I just think um, Duke means something. Anywhere you go across this country, Duke means something. And it means an awful lot in terms of excellence. And so I just think there's, there's a lot more opportunity for us to go out there and find a balance uh, and not necessarily fall into this lull of we have to be developmental. Um, now, do we have to develop our student athletes? Absolutely. Do we have to make sure that they're getting better every year? Absolutely. Um, but I do not want to limit ourselves to say we can only go out and recruit developmental players. I, I don't think that would be fair to what Duke stands for. Very good. But then to follow up with what you've said, uh, your reference to the Notre Dame experience, can you paint that picture? I, yeah, the, the, the picture is very simple. I can get on the phone with any kid across this country and I can talk to him and I can say, what does Duke mean to you? And in about 30 seconds, I'll figure out whether he's the right fit for us. And if he's the right fit for us, we can recruit him against any school in the country because there's no school in the country that, that matches our balance of academics and athletics. There's none. There's none that gives them the opportunity to compete in the ACC. There's none that gives them the quality of academic education that we have in the classroom. Uh, and so as long as Duke resonates and as long as the concept of what Duke can provide for a young man resonates with that kid and that family, we can recruit against anybody. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we'll have Casey Hintz and Luke DeCock. <laughs> the long walk. Yeah. Hi, Coach. Casey Hens from WREL in hey, Raleigh. Casey. Welcome to the area. Thank you. You've got a lot of guys over here that haven't won many ball games the last yeah. few years. Um, of course, we've already had a few hit the transfer portal, no matter what the circumstances may be. But I'm just wondering what is or has been your message, if you had a chance to talk to some of these guys, to try to get them to buy into yeah. what you're selling. It was real simple. Uh, what we've done in the past means nothing. What we did last year means nothing today. Um, this all starts fresh starting today. And this was the first thing I said to him when I got in front of him. Uh, we're going to win with this group as fast as we possibly can. Uh, we don't have a vision of the future. We don't have a vision of this long-term rebuild. Uh, we have a vision of what this program looked like not too long ago when they went to six bowls in seven years and they played in the ACC championship game. That's the vision we have as we're coming into this program. And that's what we want these kids to see and be about. And then if I could just follow up, you mentioned off the top thanking Dave Clawson, and you've talked a little bit about working with that program, but I'm wondering if you've had any conversations with him since your hiring and if he's offered up any advice to you. Yeah, uh, no, he didn't offer me any advice, but we, uh, but we did, yeah, we did have a conversation. Dave's a close personal friend of mine, and, uh, and, and I think there's a lot of mutual respect there, and um, he was obviously very helpful in getting me this opportunity and very thankful that I got it. Uh, and then probably right about that point, we became competitive. And uh, it moved into a little bit of a different atmosphere. Mike Luke DeCock from the News and Observer. Um, I'm curious in the through the hiring process. You mentioned facilities were kind of Nina's deal. 
but what sort of assurances or, uh, I don't know if guarantees is the word, did you yeah. want to add to the program? Because yeah. obviously, you know, there are some things that need fixing, but whether that's in terms of facilities or yeah. assistant coach salaries, what were you able to kind of secure yeah. to make this workable and, 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 and sort of promising for you? Yeah, I, I don't know what I was able to secure, but I know what Nina presented and, and what she provided. And, and she provided us the resources um, to go out and, and be extremely competitive from a budget standpoint with our assistant salary pool and with our staff salary pool and with the amount of staff positions we have. And, and that to me was, was the big biggest piece of uh, what made this attractive to be part of Duke right now. Um, I think we're going to be extremely competitive from a salary standpoint in this conference. Uh, I think we're going to be extremely competitive on a national scale. I think that's going to allow us to go out there uh, and not only find and hire, but also retain uh, the right coaches uh, and the right coaches to be part of this program. Uh, and I think that will only enhance the experience um, because we'll be able to develop and create some continuity uh, on our staff um, that maybe hasn't always been there. And, and just a quick follow-up. I know you said that you're focusing on the on signing day, but is there anyone who you've worked with or know that you already kind of plan on bringing in and, and sort of have a head start in that way? Yeah, I mean, obviously, over the course of 23 years, there's there's a lot of connections and a lot of. Uh, uh, pieces and, and people that you know, uh, that also creates a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle because um, there's probably a lot more than 10 um, that, you, that you know and, and are aware of. But, um, you know, like I said, we're going to take our time and we're going to create a balance um, because we've got to find what's best for Duke. Um, we can't just find uh, everybody that, that I knew or everyone that I'm friends with or like that doesn't get us where we want to go. And so we're just going to take our time. We're going to be extremely diligent. Obviously, there are some people uh, who will start showing up sooner rather than later um, that I have had past experiences with and they're going to help on this journey. Um, but we're going to make sure we do the right thing and do this the right way. Uh, we're not in a rush. We got to make sure we get it right. That's the most important part. Thank you. We have time for two more questions. Steve Wiseman, Mike Toper. Hey, Mike, I think, you know, 15 years ago, the idea of somebody saying Duke can win championships in football would have been frankly kind of laughed at given right. what had happened. And this program's changed over time. You mentioned the Coastal Division Championship that was won here eight years ago. How did that change your opinion of, of this school and this program as you watched that kind of happen recently and um, it made it more attractive to you? Yeah, I, I don't know if it necessarily changed my opinion because, you know, I haven't been following it quite as long as maybe you have. Um, it just is my opinion. Um, you know, so when I came into the ACC, uh, I did a lot of, of, of research going into that season, and I was watching a Duke team that came off of, a, of an ACC championship appearance. Uh, I came here in 2014 and played a Duke team that was extremely talented, extremely physical, and beat us all over the field. Um, so my experience of Duke is just that. Uh, it, it's a team that's competing for bowl games. It's a, comp it's a team that's competing to be at the top of our division. Uh, and it's a team that's doing things at a really high level on the football field. Uh, and so obviously I'm aware, I'm not naive to what Duke football may have been uh, in the past, but this indoor wasn't there. There was a track around the football field. We didn't have that great tower. Uh, we didn't have this great practice complex. Uh, and so there's a lot of things about Duke right now that are not the same as Duke 15 years ago. Uh, and, and that's a winning tradition a little bit over the recent history too. Good morning, Coach. Uh, Mike Topa with Spectrum News in Raleigh. Welcome morning, to the Triangle. Thank you. Um, you mentioned about the game day experience, and it's been a little bit since Wallace Wade Stadium's been rocking. I was yeah. wondering if you had uh, maybe a plan or an idea as to how to try to draw fans back into Wallace Wade and, and to get them to come to Duke football. Yeah, I, I just think we have to make ourselves available, and I think we have to make people understand that uh, they can control where this program goes sometimes as much as we can. Uh, and you've got to get in on the ground floor and we've got to do this together. Um, we can't become a great football program without fan support. 
Uh, we can't become everything that we're capable of being as a program without people coming out and supporting our team. Uh, and it's just going to be about spreading that message uh, and just imploring people that now is the time uh, to jump on board, to come be part of this program. Uh, we'll make you proud, I promise. We'll get this thing where you guys want it to go, uh, to where that experience when you do show up on Saturdays is everything you hoped it would be. And, and it's a lot of fun being out there. That concludes today's special event. Thank you so much for coming and please drive home safely. All right, thank you.